the third Sunday of Lent, in the third month of the year. And so, I would like us to walk with me in today's reflection with three images. The first image is the image of Emmanuel. So let's say the Bible is Emmanuel. The second image is the image of the cross. This. And the last image is the image of the stool. Keep those images in mind. Amen. The first thing, when we join the catechism of the Catholic Church, or when you take the book, the question they ask you, for those who attended catechism classes, it's not to shame those who didn't, but the question they ask you, first of all, once you join any catechism classes, who made you? And your answer is? And the second question is, except your teacher is not good, is that, why did God make you? And your answer is, God made me to. Uh, you just know that there is in the next, okay? You still remember. God made me to know him, to love him, to serve him, to be happy in this world with him and in the nest. That is the definition. Who and why. And so, in order to meet up this challenge or this path of trying to, love, to know, to serve, to be happy in this life and in the next, the church in her wisdom and God through the power of the Holy Spirit inspired men and that he has given us a manual to follow. And this manual is what we heard in the first reading today. Amen. The book of Exodus chapter 20, the word of God came to Moses. So Moses went up to the mountain and collected the decalogues that we are supposed to follow. It's supposed to be a manual. What, for what? For the why that we answer when we say, why did God make you? So the manual for actualization or the pattern for which we have to follow to be able to know, to love, to serve, to be happy here and to be happy in the next life is what God handed over to Moses in the book of Exodus today. I hope you are following. And because he handed that to him, we summarize all of that and we say the church has 10 commandments. Am I correct? The church has 10 commandments. And these commandments are divided in two. The first three commandments has to do with God. Now we are coming to the cross. The first commandment has to do with God. Hence, this image is up. The sign. Humanity up. Out of the ten, three has to do with God. The remaining seven. I hope my mathematics is correct. The remaining seven has to do with humanity, man. That is why the image in the church can never be the moon. When Jesus was born, a star was leading the people. But it can never be the star. It has to be the cross. Because even the manual itself is in a cross form. God, humanity, our relationship with God. And then the other part that makes the cross is the horizontal axis. Meaning to say that relationship has to do with also one another. And so you are a liar when you say, I love God. Then you have a vertical line and I hate my neighbor. Meaning to say, you don't have a cross. Rather, you have a vertical line. But for you to say, I believe in God, you must have the cross. The relationship between you and God and the relationship between you and your neighbor has to be balanced. Amen. Two images explained already. 
manual. But this manual is in a cross form. And anybody who doesn't believe in that, that is why St. Paul is saying in, in the second reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 to 24, that for Jews, they are looking for signs. For the Gentiles, the cross is foolishness because who is God that he will die on the cross? How can a God die on the cross? And the, the Jews are still looking for signs. So for them, Paul said it's foolishness to the Jews or foolishness. It's nonsense to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But for us, the cross is the power and the wisdom of God. Amen? Manual, cross, and finally, the image of a stool. Today, we are in year B, and ordinarily, we are supposed to be reading the gospel of Mark. Because that is the gospel that is slated to be read during year B of the church's year cycle. But today, we are reading the gospel of John. And we are in the third Sunday of Lent. If we remember very well, in the first Sunday of Lent, we were in the desert, face to face with ourselves, a lonely place, a time we're called to go inside ourselves and to be with God. Second Sunday, last week, Jesus took us up the mountain and showed us his glory where he was transfigured. Today, the Lord has left that place and he is here in the temple. And what he saw, he was not pleased with it. Because the temple that God commanded Solomon to build itself, that temple is built on Mount Moriah, the same place that last Sunday in the first reading, Abraham sacrificed his son in theory and in practice the lamb. And today the Lord came to the temple and what he saw was that the whole temple was turned into a marketplace. So what did he do? He made a whip and turned it and turned it and wired everybody. Get out! Get out of this place! I have only one question. Are you a temple or are you a market? That is what Jesus was asking them. You have turned my father's house into a marketplace. What is a temple? A temple is a meeting place between divinity and humanity. A temple is a place, an entity as it is here. But also a temple is a group of people. And when we go farther and farther, a temple is you. A temple is you. A temple is you. I'm saying you so that you are the one telling me, okay? So this one, I cannot speak English. <laughs> a temple is Joshua. A temple is you, Mary. A temple is you. Show by your call. You are the temple because First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Do you not know that your body is the dwelling place of the devil? I'm sorry, what? Holy Spirit, I thought you don't know the Bible. That's why I want to be sure. Do you not know that? You have to know that. Don't forget the manual. Don't forget the cross. And Jesus went into that temple. And he saw that Jew, the Jewish religious leaders who were cheating the people. What happened? Every year it is like their Christmas. They gather. And people, pilgrims, come like 1,000 people. And they come with, they have to offer sacrifice. So they will bring in different lambs. Bringing sheep to offer to God. You know what they did? What they did was, these people were corrupt. And what they would do was this. The merchants, that means the traders. The Samebukas, or some Sheis, or some Joshua's, went and bribed the Jewish religious leaders and told them that any animal they brought to this temple, tell them that animal is sick. And so they will bring somebody after one full year. We carry his your head. She coming to Jerusalem, going down 300 and meters above the sea level. And when they reach there, the, the Jewish religious now just sit in. Ah, 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 I want to buy the We just, ah, 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 this one is so good. 
that this is wrong. Take it out. What should I do? Uh, you have to buy our own. We have uh, another lamb here. Yeah, you can buy it. Deceiving the people. So once they brought it, we say that is wrong. So where should, should we take it home? No. They will keep it there. And you know what? They, what is so painful? They will take it back and recycle it next year. What you, they rejected is what they will now use it to sell to them the upper year when they will come again with another sheep. And so the Lord saw this and was angry. And the next thing is, they even told the people, you are not to accept a particular kind of money. So when they bring the money, the exchange rate is like the Nigerian dollar now. And so when you bring it, supposed to be a wages or have a day wage. But because they have been corrupted, that thing will not be up to, to be more than, they will collect more than a daily man's wage. And so Jesus, being God, saw this and was so much angry at them. It was like the dollar as we have it today. I don't know. I don't know how many of you, but that song, they go feel it. Blast and at Tinubu right now, what did he do? Or in Nigeria, you are not feeling it. We in the up north, they were feeling it. Brothers and sisters, so the Lord got angry and told them, Out! Get out of my father's house! Take it out! And so I ask you, and I'm asking the entity as a church. Is this place fulfilling or following first the manual, secondly, the cross as a place of prayer or it has returned into a marketplace? The church of the Holy Spirit in Omole, are you following the manual in a cross form or you have turned your church into a place where people come to fight I want to ask you, the apple plucking, the family thanksgiving, the bazaar, the Enugu thanksgiving, the Edo people thanksgiving, is it turning this church into a marketplace or it is bringing you closer to God? We are plucking apple in the church. Well, I can't even see the tree. Is that, are we walking in accordance still with the manual or we are doing what we think is right? If it is wrong, Jesus is saying, take it out. Take it out. Take the masturbation out because your body is not supposed to be there. You are following the wrong manual. Take the keeping of grudges out. The Lord is cleansing his temple to die. How about the pornography? Take it out. How about the keeping of malice and grudges? Take it out. How about the backbiting? Take it out. The societies that you have, the CMMM, the PD, I'm sorry, the CMO, and all the CCCCC, whatever, are they bringing people to God or are they making them feel ashamed? that we do, the thanksgiving that we do, is it shaming some ethnic groups that some ethnic groups find it difficult even now to participate in? The church as you are seated, do people feel comfortable that I am in the house of God, I don't need to bother? Or do people come into the church with fear? Father is looking at me. See the way he's looking. This madam, I don't want to sit there. Go close the temple. Let's take it out. If it is not helping us to go upward and sideways, then take it out. Because the market is a place where we seek gain, profit at all costs. But the temple is the place of people, person center relationship, first with the creator and secondly with humanity. So are you that temple that when people come to you, they feel encouraged to follow Jesus? And so you are a walking temple. The temple is not this building. 
And that is why Jesus said, remove this. The temple is you as a person, baptized, Christian, Catholic, in your shop. Are you a temple or at shop? You are a market. In your workplace, are you a temple or you are a market? In your room, when mommy is not there, when daddy is not there, do you still remember that you are a temple? If we bring your phone, are you still following the manual? Or the stickers you have there can send Jesus to hell. We keep that. Are you a temple or are you a marketplace? Are you a temple or are you a marketplace? The Lord is here to cleanse us. And so take it out and allow God to wash you up. Lord, clean me of that. Cleanse me of that. Of that anger issue that when I get angry, I must hit somebody. Cleanse me, Lord. And so make it a spiritual activity right now. Don't take it as I'm trying to make you feel bad. But you are dirty. I am dirty. So I need you, Lord, to cleanse me of my lies, my hurting words, words of discouragement, the backbiting, the gossiping. That is not the temple. That is the marketplace. Churches are multiplying, yet evil is two times more than the churches. People open churches now just for money. We are turning our churches into ATM machines. The Lord is saying, let us take that out. We should seek to build a good relationship with God. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor as he did, uh, as he did, not as yourself, but some people don't love themselves. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor, love your neighbor as he did. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor. Charity begins in the market. Okay, at home. Very good. It should begin there. That you have to wash the plates. It should begin there. That you should wake up and walk, clean the house. It should begin there. Some of us are naturally and psychologically, sentimentally lazy. What kind of laziness is creeping into the lives of the young people today? And you carry your hair like a mopping stick. And you cannot do anything. To boil simple egg is difficult. Egg, 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 egg. What kind of lassity is that? Take that out. Egg, egg. It's just to be on the phone. In phone, in phone, in phone. And somebody say five times five is what? Um, that is um, that is um, how far now? That's what you know. You cannot last it. In. You can't sit down and study. And they are all dependent. And you are here on Sunday. Depend, depend what? Take the lassity out of your life because we're in a time where if you don't walk, no pain, no gain. The only place that success comes before work is in the English dictionary because S comes before W. Brothers and sisters, let us take every other thing that is not needed out. The malice, the discouragement we give to people, the jealousy, the hate, the backbiting. Why? This image. It is the image not of beating us, but it is the image of mercy, the image of reconciliation. So how do you take it out? 
Then, in the confessional box, Jesus sits there and is always saying, I forgive you. I love you. You are mine. Take my hand. Go in peace. See no more. Belong. 